NASA Chief Bill Nelson has said that NASA continues its search for life in the universe. NASA has been at the forefront of space exploration, sending humans into space and launching probes to the edges of our solar system. Each year we learn new things about the universe that we live in, helping us to better understand what could be out there. Some have said though that perhaps this whole time intelligent life has been right under our noses. Mysterious crafts have long been a hot topic, with some believing that the crafts are genuine, while others have said that they can be easily explained as everyday things like planes and military aircrafts. Ideas for what these are range from advanced crafts sent from other worlds, advanced probes that may be looking out for other life forms, or even that these things are forms of higher intelligence, and that as of right now we can't understand their workings. With that being said, Bill Nelson, who is NASA's new administrator, has said that he wants to get to the bottom of what these things are, saying that NASA will actively look for answers to try and explain what these strange crafts are. He openly said that the reports by military officials have caught the interest of scientists worldwide, and that their goal is to find an official answer for what these things are. These comments have divided people. NASA has never been open to the idea of mysterious flying crafts, actively going out of its way to shoot down any ideas that these crafts are genuine, which has frustrated those who have looked into the phenomena. But some have said this could be a good chance for the company to be more open-minded about these things, with many saying that it's clear that something is going on, noting that military pilots have been encountering these things for years now, and that it's only been in the last few years that people are starting to open up to the idea of mysterious flying crafts. Recent reports showed us that out of hundreds of reports of mysterious flying crafts that were reported by pilots, only one of these could be explained. It's due to this that people are hoping that NASA can shine a light on what these things are, and that it may usher us into a new era where we become more open-minded. Those who are heavily invested in the topic though have said it's a good sign that a high up NASA official has acknowledged that these things are being reported, and said that hopefully we can get an answer in the near future. What many people may not be aware of is that government officials have long been interested in mysterious crafts. In fact, there's hundreds of thousands of documents detailing this, and showing that top officials have tried to explain what these things are. Many of these documents go into detail about strange objects that have been seen by officials, and that have also been seen above military sites, places where everyday crafts can't get into. It's for this reason that some have speculated that these crafts don't belong to us, noting that restricted airspace is difficult to get into, yet these objects seem to have the ability to just appear inside them, and then vanish within the blink of an eye. It's certainly no secret that government officials have been interested in them, but yet 80 years later we still seem to be no closer to understanding what these things are, where they're coming from, and how they're able to travel at the speeds they do. One interesting document reads as follows. This memorandum is in response to project number 661207, submitted by name redacted, requesting that redacted perform a photo analysis of the photographs imaging an alleged unidentified flying object. The photograph for this project was supplied by the Aerial Phenomena Office of FTD, located at Wright-Patterson's Air Force Base. The photographic package included three photo enlargements of the UFO, and one photo enlargement of a helicopter. The latter was supposedly taken at approximately the same time, and from approximately the same camera station as were the UFO photographs. The image quality of these four prints were less than optimum, and were considered poor for menstrual and photo analysis. These four enlarged photographs were copied and reproduced from a second generation negative, and attachments 1 and 2 were supposedly printed in four formats with an approximate 4 by 6 inch format. The original photograph was taken with a Polaroid Swinger. These original prints were not available for photo analysis. This greatly hampered the analysis, 
and prevented any hopes of establishing meaningful answers. Also included in the photographic package were five photographs of the alleged exposure station, and also the surrounding vicinity. These photographs were taken with a Polaroid swinger by Major R. W. Niles of the United States Air Force. He personally investigated the UFO exposure station on the shore of Lake Clare, Michigan, and tried to duplicate as closely as possible to the exact position of the original camera exposure stations. Major Niles also provided exact measurements of the area, and also the objects that were imaged in the original photographs. The assumptions used in this photo analysis are as follows. A UFO was at a distance of 0.25 miles from the camera station when photographed. This was proved by Major Miles in his investigation report. The measurements supplied by the Major are correct as stated. The UFO photograph was circular, perpendicular to the camera axis. The distance between the camera station and the object was large enough, so that adjustments to the camera focal length need not to be considered. To this day, it still remains a mystery. It's hard to get information from a lot of these reports, as many of these documents look like this, meaning that vital information has been blacked out on purpose. Regardless, it just shows how much officials have investigated these mysterious objects. There's hundreds of thousands of these documents that detail these things coming into close contact with high-up military personnel, all of which never seem to be able to fully explain what it was that they encountered. When looking into eyewitness reports surrounding the Jersey Devil, a mystery far more sinister than previously imagined becomes apparent. According to cryptid researchers, the descriptions of the Jersey Devil sightings appear to change, with certain witness sightings appearing to either directly contradict the details of past sightings, or to feature previously unnoticed physical descriptions. Originally, it was believed that perhaps the conflicting reports are evidence that sightings of the Jersey Devil are entirely fictitious, Yet collections of these eyewitness reports show impossible to explain consistencies that cryptid researchers were previously unaware of. Originally, descriptions of the Jersey Devil described the creature to have been a flying bipedal animal, with large wings that were similar in design to that of bat wings. The head of the Jersey Devil was described as being similar though possibly smaller than the head of a horse, with its legs being extremely skinny ending in horse-like hoofed feet. Oddly enough, later descriptions of the creature would claim that the Jersey Devil would appear to have the body of a kangaroo, the head of a goat and not a horse, cloven hooves, horns at the top of its head, a forked tail, and small arms that would end in sharp claws. Cryptid and UFO researcher George Dudding believed that the primary cause for the many different witness descriptions surrounding the creature appear to centre around the legend's popularity within Pine Barrens. Given the fact that it became common knowledge to residents throughout the area that a beast of supernatural origin resided within the Pine Barrens, a collection of nearby forests within the region, any strange encounter experienced within the region would immediately be labelled as an encounter with the Jersey Devil. Sightings of strange cats, unusual birds, Sasquatch-like creatures, dogmen and other impossible to explain encounters were all lumped together with the Jersey Devil, given their proximity to Pine Barrens. If this proves to be the case, then it's far more likely, according to George Dunning, that the Jersey Devil name was not just used to reference a specific creature, but was used to reference any supernatural phenomena that would occur in the Pine Barrens and instead referencing a collection of different creatures often sighted in the region. One such example of a hellhound sighting took place in Connecticut, roughly a hundred miles away from the Pine Barrens. Referred to as the Meridian Hellhounds, sightings of massive shadowy black dogs with glowing red eyes were first made near the town of Meridian, located on the Chippewa River. Eyewitnesses claimed that the dogs were nearly entirely transparent, and appeared to be nothing more than a shadow with glowing red eyes. Although the legends seem harmless at first, 
when two young children went missing roughly 60 years ago, the legends took a far darker turn. The most recent sighting of the Meridian Hellhounds took place back in 2001, when a young woman was on her way home travelling down Highway 37. According to the eyewitnesses, she saw a strange shape at the end of the road, and slowed down to get a better view of whatever it could have been. Once slowed down, she originally believed that she had sighted an extremely large dog, similar in size to a bear. As she got a better look, however, she realised that the creature was unlike any animal native to the region, having been heavily muscled, and with the head shape of a wolf. As the creature then turned to look at the woman, she could see that the monster appeared to have glowing red eyes. Staring at the eyes, the woman claimed that it appeared that the red eyes were emanating from the creature's mouth. Now in a heightened frenzy, the Meridian woman drove off as quickly as she could, fearful of the Hellhound legends. Additional sightings of dogmen Sasquatch-like creatures with the face of a wolf are often reported in the surrounding areas. One such sighting featured in Broome County was located less than 50 miles away from the Pine Barrens. According to the report, a woman had been driving back home with her two children, the youngest one two years of age and the oldest having been 11. As they pulled into the driveway sometime after dusk, in a secluded and rural location of Broome County, the mother claimed to have been overwhelmed with a sudden fear. The woman reported that as soon as she stepped out of the car, she had a sixth sense that something was watching her and her children. As she looked around for signs of a predator, she realised that there was no noise of any crickets nearby, an extremely uncommon event for the area. This led her to quickly grab the children and start rushing them into the house. As they approached the front door, she claimed to have heard what she described as a loud low growl. She would later clarify that the sound was deep-toned and hateful in character, similar to that of a large angry dog, but much deeper. Before anything else could happen, the woman got herself and her two kids inside and quickly locked the door. It wasn't long before she called the husband to come home quickly because she believed that a large animal was outside. When the husband got home, it was discovered by this point in time that the family cat had gone missing, and so the husband went looking around nearby to see if perhaps there were any bears or large wild dogs. After a moment of searching, the husband also began to notice a strange silence, only to notice a large humanoid animal running through the nearby forest. This led him to pulling out his firearm in fear that it could have been a large beast, but realised that there was no such creature that could run at such speeds on its hind legs. This led the couple to reporting the encounter to cryptid researchers, who characterised the claim as being that of a dogman, a commonly sighted creature across North America and New York. The couple's cat was never found. The Pine Barrens themselves are a supernatural hotspot, that appears to feature a plethora of cryptid sightings of various kinds. Similar supernatural hotspots have been reported in many different places across the world, such as Canoe Chase, Devon County, Bonnie Bridge and the High Bashu Forest. So what do you make of these strange encounters? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.